This is Downtown Lowdown with Downtown Halifax Business Commission. Welcome to episode 51 of Downtown Lowdown with Downtown Halifax Business Commission, recorded on June 3rd, 2021. This is where you can find out all you need or want to know about Downtown Halifax. I'm Alana McDonald-Mills, Director of Marketing. And I'm Ivy Ho, Director of Communications. We are your hosts for Downtown Lowdown. We'll be giving you the lowdown on what's new in business, resources, and issues that affect downtown. We also talk to key individuals that help make downtown Halifax better. We are back with another special COVID-19 episode. This episode was recorded via video conferencing as we are all working remotely during the third wave of this pandemic. So we apologize in advance for any issues with sound quality. In this episode, we are joined by Paul McKinnon, CEO of Downtown Halifax Business Commission, who will be discussing the recently launched Provincial Reopening Plan. Paul will also update us on the provincial advocacy efforts by 12 business improvement districts, including Downtown Halifax Business Commission. On BizBuzz, we're going to talk about what's open in Downtown Halifax, Patio Season, Pups on Patios, Open City, and the Patio Lectures Festival. We also have some new art in downtown Halifax that we'll tell you about, including a new mural on the waterfront and Argyle Fine Arts poster pole gallery. This episode is being recorded on Thursday, June 3rd, so keep that in mind while listening. The pandemic situation has been changing quickly, with new public health measures and economic programs affecting businesses implemented by the provincial government almost daily. To keep up to date, visit downtownhalifax.ca slash COVID-19 or visit novascotia.ca slash coronavirus. We now have Paul McKinnon, CEO of Downtown Halifax Business Commission, with us. He'll be discussing the Provincial Reopening Plan and the Provincial Advocacy Efforts by 12 Business Improvement Districts, including Downtown Halifax Business Commission. So, Paul, what are your overall impressions of the Provincial Reopening Plan that was just announced? Well, so I was giving that some thought, and I, I thought it's almost like if you're doing a, you know, a film review, what would I, what would I say if, if the reopening plan was a film? Yeah, I would say a two, two and a half or, or a three. Uh, can, I can be convinced to give it a three out of five. Um, but, but I think it's a bit more nuanced and complicated uh, than that. And as I was saying, if, if I was to compare this to a, to a Star Wars film, uh, I think I would compare it to the most recent one, The Rise of Skywalker, which was the final film in the latest Star Wars trilogy. Um, so as I was experiencing it, I could appreciate how tough it was to make something that would please everyone. One would say impossible. Uh, a lot of great work was put into it. Uh, it certainly could have been a lot worse. Um, but overall, kind of left me with a bit of a sense of disappointment. Uh, and I think that's certainly what we're, what we're hearing from a lot of colleagues. Uh, and I, again, it's, it's impossible to please everyone with this reopening plan. Uh, I, I will say by, by, I guess, a matter of comparison in talking to different colleagues across the country, um, you know, if I talk to, to uh, business commissions in British Columbia or New Brunswick, they, they do seem to have a lot more contentment with their plan with, than what we're hearing here in Nova Scotia. So, so yeah, could have been better, could have been worse. Um, but I guess let's break it down in a bit. Yeah, more. let's break it down and let's uh, talk about the good, bad, and the ugly, if there is the ugly. But let's start with the good. So, what is what was the what were the good things about the plan, or at least the pl- the good things that we wanted out of the plan? Yeah, so it's it's easy to forget that really is. I mean, I think as recently as a couple of weeks ago, uh, the message from the province really was that we weren't going to get something like this, right? That they weren't really that interested in in you know writing things down and committing to to phases or dates or that type of thing. Because this is something that other provinces have have done a lot more than Nova Scotia, and our approach has been to to keep things much more flexible. So the very fact that we, you know, I mean, we essentially we did get what we asked for, which was you know we wanted to have a phase plan that had details in it that were tied to you know epidemiology and and that being you know number of new cases, you know, hospitalizations, vaccine rates, all those things are in there. Um, and, and the phases are in there. There, there's five different phases as, as probably most people know by now. Um, uh, so that, I think that's all good. We, we, we did ask for that. There was some, there was a, a, a few jokes, I think the day that it launched that some people didn't like the way it was presented and the infographic didn't come out on time, but you know what, there's actually lots of different versions you can see now. Uh, and, and actually to be frank, people absorb information in different ways. So the original plan was almost like it was a five page document with different lists on it. I kind of like that because I like to absorb things that way, but you know, people started doing their own infographics. It was almost like this open source material. So there's lots of ways that you can, you can read it and understand it. Yeah, that's now. right. Uh, 
Councilor Way Mason had his version. The Halifax Chamber of Commerce had their version. Uh, and now uh, the pro uh, province of Nova Scotia, they broke it down and have a, they have a web page as well. So I, I'll put that – I'll I'll tell everybody uh, the URL after this. But, yeah, everybody has a different version. But it's all the same information. It's just how you absorb it. You're right. That's right, yeah. And it is – I mean, there's – I mean, there's lots, and there's lots of information, of course, that, that people are looking for. Um, and so, you know, we'll get a little bit uh, later on into the into the, the, uh, the flexibility challenges with it. But I mean, I think another advantage that it does have it is it is meant to be a bit of a living document. We've already seen some changes in it. Uh, so, for instance, you know, when it was released on Friday, people weren't going back to school, and then surprise, by Monday they were, which uh, brought even within my own household brought uh, many tears of joy and many tears of happiness from different people in the house. But <laughs> You know, I think it shows. You know, it is. There are things that are changeable. Um, maybe another one that that was actually just changed uh, today. We're recording this on on Thursday. Is that there was some information regarding live music in the original draft. You know, but what you could what you couldn't do actually in terms of live performances in the first phase. But then it just sort of disappeared from the plan. You know, the province has got some feedback and they're tidying up some of that. So you know, it is changeable. The phases are movable. And the other thing that I really did like about it is, you know, in terms of the vaccination schedule, like it is tied to, you know, how many Nova Scotians are getting vaccinated. And, you know, this is something that, you know, most of us you know, really see, you know, vaccination rates as the key to getting back to normal as, as quickly as possible. We need people to be vaccinated. And that's that's the best thing that any individual Nova Scotian can do to help move things along and, and get the economy up and running. Um, and so it does it does set, um, you know, it basically ties vaccination rates to moving into into new phases. So it allows Nova Scotians to all get behind it and say, listen, if we want to get to phase two quicker or phase three quicker, we can't really control, you know, the number of new cases, but we certainly can control whether we get vaccinated or not. So it, it does provide a bit of an incentive, I think, for people to get vaccinated. So that's something that, that uh, I think government got a lot of advice on and, um, you know, and they responded. So, yeah, there, there's definitely some, some good things in the plan, and especially as we compare it to, you know, not having any sort of reopening schedule to plan, you know, very recently. So um, that, those, were, those were the things that I really liked about it. Okay, so those were the, the good things that we liked about the plan. What about the bad things, the so-called bad things? Right. So I don't think uh, I don't think anyone wants to hear me nitpick things. I think anyone there's probably all sorts of individual things. We kind of identified a couple of, of big challenges um, that we feel, and these are things that not only I guess we ourselves as, as downtown Halifax Business Commission have uh, have kind of uh, looked at, but certainly we've been having conversations with our colleagues, the other business commissions across Nova Scotia, you know, and the groups that we meet with uh, on the on the NSBUT calls, like the Chamber. Commerce and lots of other groups as well, as well as just feedback from members. So certainly the big one that we're hearing a lot, and I know government is hearing a lot, is, is the lack of dates. Um, and again, um, everyone understands that the phases are movable, and, and if, even if you put specific dates in there, you know, those can be moved if, if we don't hit the other targets, such as epidemiology, you know, uh, but there is something really kind of magical about dates. And, and certainly we're hearing this a lot from the tourism industry that saying, listen, we aim to be at this point by, say, July 14th, you know, as an example, you know, we want to get to phase four. We think we can get to phase four by July 14th. If that message goes out, um, and, and phase four is, is pretty open, certainly in terms of, of uh, fewer restrictions, uh, particularly to Nova Scotians, you know, that actually allows people to plan now, right? It allows if you're taking a family vacation, you can say, well, I'm going to plan that, you know, for July 15th, you know, and again, you can cancel your plans, you can change them, but it really does set a bit of a goal. And I think a lot of people are looking for that, uh, especially, I think, for that critical, you know, the critical phase four piece and, and the phase five piece. So, you know, lack of dates is something that, um, that, um, uh, the province has heard a lot. In fact, they they did then did update the plan and provided dates. Um, I don't know if there's so much goals, but there's you know based on kind of these two week intervals, they provided some dates now, which I think you know in the dates people are starting to use them already. So I think people like dates uh, better than phases. So some of the other things that we that we have concerns about, um, you know, overall it, it really assumes, and this, and this is something we expected, but but it's disappointing. Uh, it really assumes an Atlantic Canadian bubble um, for the summer this year um, and which is essentially what we had last year. So if you're looking at this as a, you know, as a restaurant operator or a retailer or certainly someone in the, in the tourism business, you know, you're sitting there saying, well, we're going to have the same, you know, prospect of customers that we had last year. Uh, but this year we're at, we have a 75% vaccination rate, right? 75% of Nova Scotians will have at least one shot, uh, which is highly effective. Um, it's 90% it's effective um, against, uh, against most of the existing strains that are out there. Um, and last year we had 0% vaccinated. So I think there was an extra expectation logically to say we should we should have something more this year than we did last year considering the vaccination rate so uh, the Atlantic bubble you know is a bit of a disappointment um, 
And um, the other piece I'd get, and I'm going to talk a bit more about that, but the, the other piece was there's not a lot of clarity in phase five. Uh, and phase five is really when we get to, you know, most, you know, 75% of Nova Scotians have, have two shots. We're into September by that point, probably. Uh, this is kind of the, you know, living what they, what the, what the plan calls the living with COVID phase. So COVID maybe still exists, but we're highly inoculated. Uh, what does that look like? There's very few details uh, in there and in particular for certain industries. So restaurants, you know, there's no sense about, you know, once, once everyone's vaccinated, can restaurants be full again? Um, you would you would think so, but there's no commitment in the plan to that. You know, what about what about indoor events? You know, will we have Moosehead Games in the Scotia Bank Centre? Uh, and if so, you know, what kind of crowds can we have? You know, will there be a Nova Scotia tattoo in the Scotia Bank Centre next year? So there really isn't much detail. Well, there's really very little detail about that in Phase Five, um, and not much said about national or international travel. Um, and, you know, unless you want to go over to Mount Everest, that's in the plan. But no, I'm just kidding. Don't go to Mount Everest. Um, you know, there's not much information about international travel. And again, that's, that's a federal jurisdiction, but, you know, people want to know that for phase five. Yeah, no, obviously they made it very vague and kept it very vague for on purpose because we don't know what's going to happen. And so they really wanted to, you know, keep it open, I guess, to, uh, you know, to interpretation and to, you know, for – you know, to add things in uh, for restrictions. So, yeah, we certainly we certainly expect that we'll get some more details as we get closer. Uh, yeah. Again, to use the example of a restaurant owner, especially a restaurateur that's that's you know survived for the last fourteen months, they're looking at you know a summer which hopefully is going to be better than the spring was. Yeah. Um, but are they hanging on so that they can get to a point in September where they can fully open back to what 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 the regular were used to, or or do they have to hang on to restrictions? You know well past next fall into next spring, you know, in, into the future indefinitely. So I think business owners would make some very different decisions based on what the, what the province thinks we're going to get to. So right. more information with that would be, would be better. Yeah. I think they're still feeling their way through this variant that, that we're, that's uh I guess they're, they're afraid that that's going to enter Nova Scotia, what they call um, the Indian variant, but more people are calling it the Delta variant now. So there's a lot of unknowns around that. So that's probably why. Yeah. And we've been dealing with another variant, you know, this third wave that spread so quickly, so more, uh, so much more quickly than, you know, in the first wave. So I think they're being very, very cautious. Um, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's no question that the I think this I think that's probably the best way maybe to describe this plan. Maybe even as as compared to some other ones, it it, mm-hmm. it is cautious. Uh, some might say overly cautious, and that that has been the style of of Nova Scotia. It it has tended to be you know more cautious um, in many ways than other provinces. And, and there's certainly people that would say that that's why we've done done a better job at uh, at controlling things. But mm-hmm. um, but but that is a, I think that's a concern. So right. kind of overall, when we look at the plan, um, I mean, there's I guess. A, we can nitpick it all day long. Uh, mm-hmm. There's kind of one major shift that that we and, and a number of other groups have been advocating for, um, which seems to be gaining some momentum, uh, I would say, just even over the past couple of days, uh, and especially if, as other provinces have released their plans. Uh, and that is looking specifically at, at phase four. So phase four, we anticipate that's about mid-July. Uh, that's when we have 75% plus of the population uh, vaccinated. And that was that was that that's to be the date when we kind of open up to the Atlantic bubble. Uh, but the Atlantic bubble seems to maybe have already been popped uh, by the sense that New Brunswick and their plan plans to open up to all of Canada, um, and Newfoundland now has announced that they plan to open up to all of Canada. So there's lots of questions about, well, it, can there even be an Atlantic bubble, or are we really looking at Nova Scotia just partnering up with Prince Edward Island? You know, how would that work? How would we how would we sift out you know other Canadian travelers from New Brunswick? And it really then begs the question: Well, if if we're if we were willing to have people from New Brunswick come in, and they, because they've got a similar epidemiology to Nova Scotia. Why wouldn't we let people from Quebec or Ontario or Manitoba come in or anywhere across Canada? And so that's really led to to our main ask, which is to say, you know, and the, and the plan kind of gives a little bit of wiggle room. The plan does talk about, you know, in phase four, there could be some consideration giving to Canadian travelers, you know, if various conditions are met. I think what we've done is we've kind of pushed that a little bit further, saying, you know, logically um, to us, it makes sense that if, if we're willing to open up to certain provinces because they've got good epidemiology, uh, why wouldn't we open to all provinces, you know, with, the, with that same epidemiology? And maybe that requires, you know, testing beforehand or testing when you arrive. Um, but this idea of, of not uh, forcing quarantine on people from other provinces. So, you know, that is an idea that, that seems to be gaining momentum. And I think that, that certainly the province and, and public health are, are going to make a decision about, you know, whether Nova Scotia actually will be more isolated than it was last summer uh, or whether we're going to expand things <laughs> simply because of the decisions being made in, in New Brunswick uh, and Newfoundland. Well, they are going to be looking at uh, testing at the airport, so that's a good sign. 
because uh, we've never done that before in Nova Scotia, like testing at the airport when pe- the travelers arrive. That's right. It's something we haven't heard uh, a lot about is, is the advances in testing technology. So, yeah, I think testing at the airport and there's, you know, there are home kits um, that, that mm-hmm. are available for people to to access as well. So, you know, I think that in an our ask in, in saying let's look at, you know, and I guess maybe this is the this is the maybe the different approach that maybe the business community would have to the plan is, you know, the plan is kind of I think the plan kind of assumes some worst case scenarios and is and is saying we have to, you know, we have to stay safe. This is the way that we do it. And I think what what the, the we're Maybe it's a slight change. Maybe it's a major change. Is is what we'd like to see is let's aim to accomplish some things. So let's aim to have Canadian travel. What would it take to do that? Canadian travel without quarantine. You know, but maybe it takes more testing at the airport and as people enter the border. Maybe there's a requirement for people flying here. They've got to have tests beforehand and after they arrive. Uh, things that don't require the 14-day quarantine because certainly the quarantine piece kills any sort of leisure travel coming here. So right. you know, it'd be nice if we could kind of turn our minds collectively, public health, science, business community, uh, whoever to see, you know, what would it take uh, to get to, uh, to to open borders within Canada uh, in mid-July? Uh, because that is what, frankly, most other provinces are looking at. Yeah, and we did send a letter uh, to Premier Rankin. This is an open letter with a, a few other business improvement districts in uh, the province uh, about this. So people can view that letter on our website at downtownhalifax.ca. It's under latest news. Uh, the actual URL is pretty long, but you can easily find it on our front page right now. So, uh, yeah, so people can look at that letter in detail. Yeah, that's right. And just in terms of next steps, so I mean, we have met with the premier. Uh, we've met with uh, you know, other ministers um, uh, on a couple of, on a couple of occasions, and we have regular conversations with with a number of the deputy ministers uh, a couple times a week. Um, and so those those have been very productive conversations. They are open to taking feedback. Certainly, they they know what our position is. They're getting lots of feedback from from other groups, and and frankly, lots of conflicting feedback uh, from individuals and groups. And they have to kind of sort through all that. Um, uh, so you know we'll continue to have those conversations and and push what, what we'd like to see and and of course you know we're always looking for more information and I think what we all agree on is you know these you know the restrictions need to be you know kind of need to be scientifically based um, um, so certainly as, as things change we all understand that uh, that that the plan you know the plan needs to be flexible to the point where if you know we all want to avoid a fourth uh, a fourth wave so um, that flexibility is important um, the other thing I'll mention too is the in our meeting with the premier he did extend that you know he's happy to to help us advocate to the federal government because this is all a bit of a jigsaw puzzle with supports and so some things are provincial some things are federal um, and so a couple of main asks that we still have for the federal government uh, is that we'd like to see the wage subsidy um, extended beyond September 25th we'd like to see the rental assistance program uh, extended beyond uh, September 25th we'd like to see an extended date for the interest-free repayments uh, of the Canadian emergency business account um, loans uh, and, and particularly for those uh, sectors that are that are highest impacted again it's a more matter of just extending those very favorable terms a little bit into the future, which would cost the feds uh, very little. Um, So we'd love to see that. And the final thing is the federal programs uh, are still not open to new businesses. So businesses that that came, you know, that opened up during the pandemic, uh, there's almost a bit of a bias uh, against them and and they need support as well. So uh, our provincial, there's a case where the provincial programs have been, have been open to new businesses. So the province has figured out how to do it, uh, but the feds haven't. So those are our federal asks. And uh, and we do thank the premier for, for passing those on any chance he gets with his uh, federal federal counterparts. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll continue these conversations and uh, you know, said things are changing every day. So, um, you know, by the time this podcast gets out, maybe all this will be moot. Hopefully, but I don't know. I don't know. It's, we'll leave that open just like phase five. Um, so yeah, thank you for those updates, Paul. Um, and just to uh, let our listeners know that the provincial reopening plan is available at novascotia.ca slash reopening hyphen plan. So you can check that out in more detail. Great. That was Paul McKinnon, CEO of Downtown Halifax Business Commission. We were discussing the provincial reopening plan and the provincial advocacy efforts by 12 business improvement districts, including Downtown Halifax Business Commission. As always, Downtown Halifax Business Commission strives to provide the latest COVID-19 related information as the province revises restrictions. DHBC continues to follow the directives of the Nova Scotia Health Authority. Check DHBC's main COVID-19 resource page for businesses and for the public at downtownhalifax.ca slash COVID-19. The provincial state of emergency has been renewed and remains in effect until 12 noon, June 13, 2021. 
Premier Ian Rankin and Dr. Robert Strang, Nova Scotia's Chief Medical Officer of Health, announced on May 28th that the province will reopen gradually under a five-phase plan. Each phase is based on COVID-19 activity, public health and testing capacity, hospitalizations, and vaccination rates. Phases are expected to last between two and four weeks, as long as certain criteria are met in these areas. Key changes in Phase 1 include most businesses opening further and outdoor gathering limits increasing. In subsequent phases, businesses will gradually increase capacity to the maximum capacity possible with public health measures such as physical distancing, gathering limits will further increase, events and activities will be allowed with increasing numbers of attendees, and border restrictions will start easing. Phase 1 is currently underway. Here are some of the highlights that may affect businesses in downtown Halifax. Travel is no longer restricted within Nova Scotia. Nova Scotians can gather outdoors with a consistent social group of up to 10 people without physical distance. The limit for indoor gatherings remains the people you live with. Two households with one or two people can still join together, but they must be the same two households all the time. Faith gatherings can be held outdoors with a limit of 10 plus officiants when hosted by an organized organization. Drive-in services are allowed with no limit on numbers. Wedding and funeral ceremonies remain limited to 5 plus officiants indoors but can increase to 10 plus officiants outdoors and there can be no receptions or visitations. Restaurants and licensed establishments can open patios at their maximum capacity with physical distance between tables, a limit of 10 people per table, and masks when people are not eating or drinking. They must stop service by 11 p.m. and close by midnight. All retail stores can operate at 25% capacity, ensuring physical distance. Personal services such as hair salons, barbershops, and spas can operate by appointment only following their sector plan, but cannot offer services that require removing the customer's mask. Fitness and recreation facilities can offer outdoor activities with a limit of 10 people with physical distancing or multiple groups of 10 that are distanced on their own property as well as one-on-one personal training outdoors. Outdoor pools can open with a limit of 10 people at a time with physical distancing. Organized sports practices can have 10 people outdoors without physical distancing or multiple groups of 10 that are distanced. Professional arts and culture organizations can hold rehearsals with 15 people indoors, and amateur rehearsals can have 10 people outdoors without physical distancing. Students from within Canada can apply to enter the province for in-person or virtual studies if they are enrolled in the summer semester. The full provincial reopening plan can be found at novascotia.ca slash reopening hyphen plan. People who do not follow the public health measures can be fined. For example, the fine is now $2,000 per person at an illegal gathering. These are just some of the restrictions that may affect businesses, workers, and visitors in downtown Halifax. For more information and the full list of restrictions, visit Nova Scotia Health Authority website at novascotia.ca slash coronavirus. And now for BizBuzz. And it's time for BizBuzz. Lauren Andrews, our Marketing and Communications Coordinator, is here with me today along with Ivy. Hi, Lauren and Ivy. Thanks for joining me. Hello. Hey, Elena. On this episode of BizBuzz, we'll chat quickly about what's open in downtown Halifax, patio season, pops on patios, and we'll touch quickly on Open City 2021 and the Patio Lanterns Festival. But first, we have some new art in downtown Halifax to tell you about, including a new mural on the waterfront and Argyle Fine Arts Poster Pole Gallery. Lauren, can you tell us a bit more about these two new art installations? Sure. So first, downtown Halifax has a new piece of artwork on the Halifax waterfront. The mural is titled Within the Body by Alice McLean. Through the Gritty to Pretty Place Making Grant, the mural was placed on the side of the Halifax Ferry Terminal Building. The mural is now completed and added to the self-guided downtown art tour. You can check this new mural and all the other Gritty to Pretty placemaking projects in downtown Halifax at downtownhalifax.ca slash art tour. Argyle Fine Art Gallery is hosting an open-air poster pole gallery on Barrington Street. They're installing posters on utility poles to help beautify downtown. The posters will be hung up throughout June, July, and August. For more information, visit their website ArgyleFineArt.com. Thanks, Lauren. And you can learn more about Downtown Halifax's Gritty to Pretty placemaking program at downtownhalifax.ca slash gritty to pretty. So as we have already mentioned, and as most people already know, we are into phase one of Nova Scotia's reopening plan. 
This means that outdoor patios can open with two meters between tables and a maximum of 10 people from the same closed social bubble per table and masks are required except when eating and drinking. Food and drink establishments without patios are still open for takeout, curbside pickup and delivery. Retail stores are open again at 25% capacity and personal and wellness services like spas, salons, barber shops and body art establishments are also open by appointment only. Services that require clients' masks to be off are still not allowed. But if you are not ready or unable to venture out yet, most businesses are still offering takeout, curbside pickup, local delivery, and shipping options. We recommend checking out an individual business online first to see if they are open and how they are operating before heading out. We've been updating our What's Open in Downtown Halifax pages on our websites, and you can see a list of what is open and open online at downtownhalifax.ca slash open. Please take note that these pages are constantly being updated as things change, So if you notice something that needs to be updated or added, don't hesitate to contact us at communications at downtownhalifax.ca. So now that outdoor patios are open again in downtown Halifax, we can officially declare that it is patio season. And did you know that we have well over 60 patios in downtown Halifax? And we have most of those patios listed on our website at downtownhalifax.ca slash patios. We've been busy updating it over the past few days, but we do have some new patios to check out this year that we'll be adding to our list. And they include the Brown Hound Ironstone Lane, which is just off Hollis and Bishop Streets. The Brown Hound is a cozy British style pub with a great patio that you can check out. Harvest, which is a farm to table eatery on the corner of Market and Sackville Streets, also has a new dog friendly patio. And Hermitage Restaurant on Lower Water Street is opening a patio at some point, so keep an eye out for that. And that is really just the tip of the iceberg. Again, there are so many patios in downtown Halifax to try out this summer. So, Ivy, do you have any uh, favorite patios in downtown Halifax? Oh, there's so many to choose from, and it's hard to narrow it down because I really love patios. Uh, but I think uh, the Old Triangle, we were there a couple of times last summer, and I can't wait to try out the Old Triangle again this summer. Mm-hmm. It's very family-friendly, um, and we brought our, our young son with us for dinner a couple of times to the Old Triangle after a day of, like, harbor hopper, waterfront mm-hmm. uh, playground, and then we just had dinner there. It was great. Uh, Julep is great for for lunch. I went there a couple of times last summer for mm-hmm. lunch as well. Actually, one time I was with patio. you. Yeah, and they're building their patio as of this, the recording of this podcast, so it should be ready hopefully for next week, the week of the 7th. June That's 7th. great. That's great because they have such good food, and it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a lovely patio just to watch people walk by. It's mm-hmm. a nice people-watching patio. Um, and then recently, uh, you and I were at uh, the Stubborn Goat Beer Garden mm-hmm. yeah. uh, patio, which is huge. Uh, yeah. It's massive. It's on the waterfront, uh, right on the boardwalk, and um, we were there for their their mock lunch service. Mm-hmm. So they were getting ready uh, to open up and they were we were there for the kind of the rehearsal uh, service and the service was great so yep. you know kudos to them and the food was excellent I had the lobster roll and uh, it's just a great atmosphere on the waterfront yeah. and it was so sunny and hot out and it was perfect patio yeah weather. it really did feel like summer yeah it did finally for a moment, for a moment finally <laughs> Well, I like uh, all the patios along Argyle Street. There are so many patios on that two blocks, uh, or actually three blocks, really, of downtown Halifax. Um, you know, there's the Pint, the Bitter End, Bianca, Aperitivo. Uh, World Tea House has a patio you can sit out on. Tokyo Roll, Moxie's, the Economy Shoe Shop, Dirty Nelly's, Lot 6. The Carlton, and then we have like the auction house and five fishermen on the other block. I mean, there's yeah, so I think they're that's uh, under construction right now. They're okay, they're, yeah, yeah, so they're, not they're quite coming. open yet, but soon they're coming soon. Yeah. Um. So really, if you're looking for a patio, you can either patio hop mm-hmm. along Argyle Street. Um. Because I, I think I also forgot to mention in Toho's, and then the Gahan has a great patio that's covered that's under Rogers Square. So many, so many. And, or if you like, you go to one place and they're full, you can try the next place and go. And That's right. Yeah. So many patios. There's such a great uh, condensed area for patios. I mean, in addition to Argyle Street, there's also tons of patios downtown. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out and uh, going to more patios when as the weather gets warmer. Yeah, same here. Yeah. So if you're a business in downtown Halifax and you would like your patio listed on our page, email communications at downtownhalifax.ca with a photo of your patio and the address. And again, you can check out all the patios in downtown Halifax at downtownhalifax.ca slash patios. And as we heard back on episode 46, when we interviewed Gordon Stewart from the Restaurant Association of Nova Scotia, also known as RANS, 
pet dogs are now allowed on patios in Nova Scotia. A few things to remember when you bring your pooch to a patio. Ask if your dog is allowed on the patio first. Some patios may not be welcoming dogs yet, or they may have a quota for how many dogs their patio can take, or they may have a designated dog-friendly area. Dogs are not allowed inside. Note that this rule does not apply to service dogs. Dogs are not allowed to eat but can drink water if the bowl is brought by the dog owner. And of course, be respectful of the space and of other diners. Don't let your dogs on the patio furniture clean up after your dog. And if your dog is misbehaving, please know that you may be asked to leave the patio. And if you're a business in downtown Halifax that has a dog-friendly patio, we have created some Pups on Patios material that you can use to display on your business, including posters, window stickers, and social graphics. We will be sending those out to businesses soon, or you can email alana at downtownhalifax.ca for more information. And finally, a quick update for our members on Open City 2021 and the new Patio Lanterns Festival. Open City is still going ahead this year on June 19th. That date has been confirmed. Downtown Halifax businesses that have registered can still submit their special or promotions for Open City to opencity at developns.ca. And for those of you not familiar with Open City, it is an annual celebration of all the entrepreneurs and small businesses in the Halifax and downtown Dartmouth area that make our community so special, vibrant, exciting, and welcoming. You can learn more and see all the participating businesses at opencityhalifax.ca. And Patio Lanterns is a new festival that is being organized by our friends and partners at Develop Nova Scotia, Events East, and Discover Halifax. The dates for Patio Lanterns are still to be determined, but this new festival will be a multi-week festival to kick off and enjoy patio season. Businesses are invited to participate for free by offering a special menu item or drink, having special patio decorations, activations, or performances, etc. More information on this event will be forthcoming over the next few weeks, but in the meantime, you can email communications at downtownhalifax.ca for more information. And that's it for BizBuzz this week. Thanks for joining us. This concludes episode 51 of Downtown Lowdown, recorded on June 3rd, 2021. For more information, go to downtownhalifax.ca slash podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative, please rate and subscribe to Downtown Lowdown. Don't forget to follow at Downtown Halifax on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening.